So my guess is if you are looking at this video, you are looking for a small bore inexpensive bike that is reliable. And to cut this video super short and to get straight to the point, I've taken this KLX250 everywhere one can imagine and without a doubt it is one of the best dual sports that is dirt biking enough for even gnarly trails but yes i can't ride this dual sport in higher elevations unfortunately and you know when they say it is 80 percent rider and 20 percent bike i'm gonna switch that up and i'm gonna say it's 95 percent rider and five percent bike because this klx 250 did fine everywhere i took it until that five percent kicked in for power there's certain areas i needed that power that little extra punch it was physically unable to perform at 14,000 feet elevation when things got pretty steep so in other words if this was a klx let's say 350 or 400 I might say it would be 100% rider and you don't need any other bike unless you're Graham Jarvis bunny hopping across 15,000 logs. Anyhow to continue on this video is going to talk about if the KLX250 is right for you, if you should buy it, keep it, or look for anything else. Now is this KLX250 for you? Say you have been riding dual sports for a very long time. You don't care much about going fast or getting up to speed quickly. You are a super chilled rider and honestly you don't care about doing tough obstacles. You only want to stick to easy single track quote unquote easy because all single tracks are difficult but by design but let's just say flowy and you just want to trickle up things and take your time on the trail i would say yes this klx 250 is perfect for you now honestly when people say the klx 250 is too heavy for trail riding i mean come on no it's not i've owned this klx 250 for a year i also have a two stroke and it feels fine it feels planted I really don't understand when people say it's too heavy for trail riding. I can see it on very tight single track where more balance is required, but on normal double track and normal trails, I can't even feel the difference between my two stroke and KLX 250 besides the power band. Of course, when you drop it and you need to pick it up. I know it sounds crazy, but actually in fact, I prefer my dual sport like my KLX 250 or DRZ 400 on double wide trails versus my TE250i. They are much more comfortable and they feel better on double track. Now is this KLX 250 for you? Say you already have a beginner's bike, you are looking to upgrade into something better but not quite ready for something powerful. But you definitely know yourself, you know you are the kind to want to get more power down the road. You are also looking for a bike that can do 65-70 miles an hour comfortably, especially if your state has a lot of uphill sections. You are the kind to want to push yourself and hit any trail you see. And to be honest, I think I'll stop right here and say the KLX 250 might not be for you. See, don't forget, I live in Colorado and we have a lot of roads that just go continuously uphill. Now the KLX 250 struggled to reach 70 miles an hour and yet alone it took a long time to pick that speed back up, especially if it were to slow down because a car was making a right or something. It became a bit of a burden to keep up with traffic on the higher elevation states, especially up in the hill climbs. Passing cars definitely was a struggle as well, I just could not pass any cars, at least at speed. I quickly realized I needed more power on the KLX when it was needed on the roads quite often. Hence, if this is the case, you are the kind to, let's say, want to challenge yourself on tough obstacles, but you're still on that new rider phase. But you know eventually you want to challenge yourself on 
tougher obstacles, steep hill climbs, and you know you have a bunch of that stuff around. Perfect example is say you want to go to Moab, but a bit concerned on the power because to be honest, certain trails on Moab, I don't think I would have brought the KLX250 just because I was not confident on the power. And if it were to stall out or just not have enough kick to climb some of these crazy hill climbs, I probably would have gotten seriously hurt. Now is this KLX250 for you? Say you have an old beat up dirt bike or dual sport and looking for something new, but you already know you are just a chugger type, you plan on hitting the streets to get to your trails, but really you won't be going past 60 miles an hour and yet alone you don't care much about speed. You only have an interest in average trails, some gnarly stuff here and there inside your trail system, but ideally you won't be hitting anything crazy, for instance like crazy steep hill climbs in Moab, or perhaps you don't live in high elevation states like Colorado where the hard passes are very high and steep. You really don't care about going fast, but just enough to clear up that step ledge, and then you are back to chugging around the trails. You are more of an explorer going at pace and want something reliable and comfortable for the long haul, yet alone a capable machine. I will have to say the KLX250 is definitely right at this alley, but capable but not fast. It will get you there, not quickly, but it will do the job, especially at comfort. The KLX250 would definitely be for you if you really don't have much tough technical trails around your area. Say your single track is mostly flowy with some step rocks here and there, but it's the climbs, the really steep climbs at elevation is what really gets this KLX250 going pretty south. Now this is exactly what the KLX250 is for. Capable, it's proven, can be fast on flat dirt roads, can do single track, and the kind of bike that you just leave dirty for a year straight because it won't give you any issues. Now how about for myself? As for myself, I have to be honest, I can say this KLX250 could have been the right bike for me if it had bigger, stronger engine for the more crazier, gnarly stuff where power is definitely needed. And yes, a lot has to do with elevation and the steep climbs around our passes at 14,000 feet. But there are certain trails I won't bring this KLX250 on. See, for myself, I like challenging myself. I like doing really gnarly stuff. I like doing hill climbs. I just want to have the power ready. For instance, certain single tracks off of Moab where it just gets crazy steep. And I don't trust the power of the KLX250, but then again, if this was a 350 or 400, in all honesty, this would have been my do-it-all bike. I would have never gotten a two-stroke or a 701 for exploring. The DRZ comes pretty close, but sadly, I don't want to spend an hour getting the jetting right just to go to Moab or Idaho or another high mountain trail. The sixth gear would have been ideal for a true dual sport and tougher off-roader. Because when you have the DRZ 400 gear at 1350, its stop speed is 50-55 miles an hour screaming. But with the KLX 250 on the sixth gear geared at 1350, it does better on the road than the DRZ 400 believe it or not, just without the power. Anyhow, I hope you guys liked this video, subscribe, hit that bell button, watch me grow in the dirt bike and dual sport world, and I'll catch you guys on my next video.